This is speed lag. I'm an animator and illustrator and welcome to my advanced 2D iRig tutorial for After Effects. I'm going to cover the basics on making advanced controllers to get a wide range of emotions from your own characters. I'll also give you a few ideas on how you could further push your rig like never before. We'll be using joysticks and sliders, which is a plugin available on aescripts.com. It's a powerful tool that opens up advanced rigging options for After Effects. We'll also use Duic by Rainbox, which I'm personally a huge fan of for rigging and workflow. So before we begin, like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of my next video in this series. All right, so first I wanna talk about the design that you'll be rigging. Here I have an art-directed version that I'll be working off of. Uh, this is built in Illustrator. It's just all, all vector. And over here, I have a simplified version of it that's just the basic shapes. So we have this, which is the eye opening. We have the full pupil, an eyelash, and then an eyebrow. You can really do this with any design. The, the whole point of this is that I teach you how to rig the main points of an eye, and then from here, you can use your own design. Um, I'm also going to use Overlord to move these from Illustrator to After Effects. So I'm just going to grab the opening here which you can uh, see that it has a, a bezier point up here and down here. I'm going to hit this to push it to After Effects. And in After Effects, if I grab my pen tool, you can see that it has the exact same bezier points right here. You can do it that way, or you can build it in After Effects yourself. This technique works just fine either way because all we're gonna be rigging actually are these path shapes here. So if you wanted to use mask animation for whatever reason, you could do that just fine. Um, it is just anything you could put a keyframe to, we will be rigging and that covers that. So I'm gonna rename my eye fill the left eye fill. And that's just gonna help us kind of keep track of where we are. And the first thing we're going to do to get this rig started is set some keyframes. So the first keyframe we will make, if you type here in the search bar, you can type path and that'll pull down the path. And if we just hit the button there, this is our default position. So right now, don't pay any attention to uh, these notes that I have up here. That's actually gonna be for our second stage. Our first stage, I'll make some new notes. So if this first one, First keyframe we set is the origin. All right, so these are the next keyframes that we're gonna set. The, the upper and lower reference, the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid. And we will be setting a keyframe for the Y axis and the X axis of both of these lids. So I grab my layer here, I'm gonna set a new keyframe and I'm going to move, oh, don't move the whole layer. I just want to move this single point. The simpler you can make this, the better. Uh, that goes for the artwork as well. The less bezier points you have to deal with, the easier and better results you're going to get. So we're just going to put this as closely as we can to the point. And you might have noticed that I didn't pull it straight down. So you can see that it kind of moves on this angle across the screen. And even though this is the Y axis, this is, think of it as the Y axis for the eyelid itself, uh, as opposed to our compositional Y axis. That just, I've done a little bit of uh, practice. I've done well, quite a few practices with this rig, and this seems to be the best result for this eye style. It might be a little bit different for you, so I definitely recommend getting comfortable with trying things out so that's the, the Y axis. We're going to copy and paste the default key here. And now we're going to set another keyframe for the X. Grabbing that point and moving it to the left. Uh, uh, copy paste the default or the default keyframe. And now we are on the lower Y and the lower X, so we will do 
what we just did. So here with the lower Y, you can see I'm going across kind of to the center point and then working with it to get it as close as I can. Doesn't need to be exact, but you're saving yourself a world of hurt the closer you can get it. All right, and then paste that default key and do our last keyframe. And this is the X. Uh, maybe we won't go that extreme. It's kind of nice to give ourselves that sometimes, but we'll go to where it doesn't look too out of place. All right, so I'm gonna back it up and you can see that we have some weird keyframes. What I failed to mention, and I probably should have mentioned earlier, I might put a note on the screen, is that we, we're working in a pretty standard composition. So 1920 by 1080, uh, the frame rate is 24 frames a second. There's no real standard for why I'm doing that. Obviously HD is, is standard, but this, composition size can actually be pretty arbitrary. I just know that I won't be scaling up any larger than this. So this gives me a, a aspect ratio that I'm comfortable with and also a size that I know I can scale down from. Um, but your design might require something different. That's okay. This is just kind of a nice standard where I know it's not gonna push my system too far. Okay, so we have our keyframes set here. And the next thing we're going to do is open up the sliders tab underneath joysticks and sliders. They have these joysticks tab and then a sliders tab. And with our layers selected, we will select the create new slider null. And we are going to name this left eye sliders. And so we can open up the effect panel here and we get these expression controllers, which if we scrub through them, they will go between our default position and our extreme that we set. And then also in the negative direction as well. So we get both the eye close as well as the eye widen from that one keyframe that we set. Uh, this is the X. And so you can see we get the left and right there. And then the lower lid, we get the same thing. So I close, I widen, and then the left and right on that. I'm going to name these, and that's going to help us when we get to our next phase. All right, so I just named these the same keys that we set. So down here, when we set these little notes, uh, each of these notes was above a keyframe and each of these sliders represents each of those keyframes. So they're in the same order that we set them. So we have our upper Y, we have our upper lid X, we have our lower lid Y and our lower lid X. So with that layer selected, we are going to now create UI sliders. This is a neat little feature of joysticks and sliders. So when we have that layer selected and hit create, it is going to go through and build out some graphic user interface versions of those slider controls right here. And the nice thing about this is this gives us actual transform information on these sliders, which is really cool. And there are also individual layers down here. So let me grab all of them and move them to the top and clean these out just by shy guying them, locking them, putting them away. I'm gonna move the upper layers above the lower ones just because that helps my brain. Uh, they're the top ones here, they're the top of the eye, just it's a lot cleaner that way. So what we are going to use these for is to drive our actual controller, which is the joystick control. This is pretty easy. We're just going to hit the, or we're going to select all these, hit P for position, and then we will be setting some keyframes on the X axis because all of these move on the X axis. So starting with X position, we will just select the little stopwatch there, which will create a default keyframe. And now we're going to use the notes that I already set here at the top. So we have origin, right, left, up, down. And this is going to set keyframes for those positions of the joystick. So right, uh, 
we don't need to do anything with the the y axis because when the joystick is right it shouldn't affect the up and down so i'm going to just set default keyframes for those and then for the lower x see this is to go to the right it looks like if we scrub to the negatives it'll go to the right so we'll do negative 100 that is the extreme it shouldn't go any further than that so if we scrub infinitely the other direction you can see it doesn't do anything negative 100 is the maximum and then for the x axis we will do or the upper x we will do the same so negative 100. to go left it's pretty simple all we got to do is get rid of that negative and now it will go 100 which is the other direction and then we will hit our default keys for y for the y axis and now we will do the reverse so now we're going to go up so the upper x doesn't get touched so we're going to just set default key there and then the lower x doesn't get touched so we will set the default key there make sure that's all looking good it's all looking good and then for the upper y we're going to set our extreme so upper y will be negative for 100 or for up will be negative 100 and then the lower y will be positive 100 and down we'll just switch these around so the 100 will become negative 100 the negative 100 will become positive 100 and then these just get the default so we'll hit these to set the default keyframe So now that we have our driver keyframes, we can switch over to the joysticks panel. And we will set a joystick for the upper lid and the lower lid individually. So first thing we're going to do is just make sure we grab the two layers for the upper lid and hit this button right here, which will create a new joystick. And we will call this left, I, I say left upper eyelid. And if we grab the joystick, which is the little thing here, we can test out that motion. And that's looking really good. It's a little weird because we don't have the bottom layer set yet. So let's do that really quick. Minimize that. We won't be touching these. And let's do the lower X and Y. Grab those two layers, hit the joystick button here. And we will call this left upper, or not upper, lower eyelid. And that gives us another joystick. We'll move this one up here now. And when we grab, oh, let's move that underneath again. It just helps my brain. Grab the joystick, move it around, test out that rig. So here is where you might do a little bit of troubleshooting if like, you start to, if you close the eye here and you're like, oh, that just doesn't look right, you might go in and adjust those keyframes. I'm probably not going to mess with them. These look pretty good, pretty close. It gets a little wonky here. You can see like it starts to flatten out. So I might just when I'm animating it, kind of pull it a little bit further in. Little adjustments, but it's not too bad. It looks really good when it widens you can see it's pretty responsive like i'm not messing with the the frame rate or anything right now it's pretty responsive it's going to bog down as we have as we pass expressions through more compositions but right now it's looking pretty good so um that's nice and also just one of the reasons i really love joysticks and sliders it's a really responsive plugin To move on to our next step, we are going to take this eye that we rigged and put it into what will be our face composition. So I'm going to uh, duplicate this, the left eye composition, and we're going to change this to right. So what was L underscore I is now R underscore I. And otherwise, they are completely duplicated. I will grab them both and we will put them into a single composition. Make sure that you have your sequence layers turned off, single composition, 
and use dimensions is fine. So now we have those two in here. To make the right eye, we are going to simply hit the S for the scale transform, uncheck the little link, and then in the, I think it's the Y axis that's gonna rotate along or scale on, we are going to do negative 100, which will flip it. And there we go. So that, we will come back to that later. The first thing we're gonna do is go into our left eye composition. We're gonna move these controllers from in here, which is our rigging composition to our, our uh, or what what's our driver composition to our main rigging composition. So I'm actually gonna rename this that we, that we made to eyes rigging comp. And to move these controls from this composition to the uh, master composition, composition this is in, we will grab the joystick itself. Underneath here, we have this move joystick to parent comp uh, little menu. Drop down and it should automatically populate whichever one it is embedded within. And then you hit the two parent button. That'll change its color and now it's locked so I can't interact with it in here. It is inside this composition and driving the rig inside the child composition. And we're gonna do the same thing with the lower lid. Everything looks, the drop down is correct. Hit to parent, and that will send it to the parent. Scale these down. We're gonna make this look a little bit nicer, and it's all starting to come together. So for the right eye, it's pretty simple. We actually get to use a lot of the controls that we already set. We don't have to do a whole lot of re-rigging. The only thing we need to do is change the left and the right. So let's grab the upper eyelid, the upper eyelid joystick, and yeah, make sure it's selected here in the drop down. I don't know if you actually need to have it selected down here. I just kind of like to have my bases covered. Uh, but with the upper eyelid selected here in the drop down, you can unbind that joystick. So now we are using these sliders again. Uh, if you let's unshy guy this, actually, no, it is right here. So when we hooked it up to the joystick, this all became code. But now that we unbound it from the joystick, these have returned to their keyframes. And so we're going to do just a little bit of editing. We'll pull the right keyframes out. Move the left ones over, and then we will pull these back in. And with these two layers selected, we can then bind them to the upper eye joystick again. And so now when we go left, it will go right. And when we go right, it will go left. And that's exactly what we want. So we'll do the same thing with the lower eyelid. We'll close the upper eyelid, and you can see that this is all code right now. And when I unbind these, okay, it looks like it's not based on this. It looks like it's based on what you have selected. Uh, when you unbind them, they return to their keyframes and we will do the same thing. So this is the lower X and Y. You pull out the right, move the left over like that, and then pull this back in. And then we make sure that we have the lower eyelid joystick selected to rebind them. And now when we go left, it'll go right. We go right, it'll go left. That's what we want. So we are going to rename the joysticks inside here. We're just going to change that L to an R. And then we are going to do the same thing that we did with the left eye, where we are going to make sure we have the parent rig selected. We grab one of the joysticks and then we just hit the two parent button. It'll turn red and I'll move to the parent comp. We'll do the same thing here, the lower eyelid to parent. And now when we go to our main rigging composition, 
everything is on top of each other. So we're just gonna move these around. This is kind of redesigning our layout right here. We're gonna lock both of these. And we get an eye that moves independently of the other eye. How cool is that? And that ends the first stage of this iRig tutorial. So we already have a pretty advanced iRig as it is, just even this level of control over the sort of expression that you could get out of the eyelids is pretty good. The next step we're going to take is something that I sort of came up with and has I've used in a lot of um, rigs that I've created over the years. And it's a really popular technique in some of my uh, smaller breakdowns. So I'm gonna share that with you here today. First thing we're gonna do is clean up our, uh, our project folder over here because it's gonna get a little bit more complicated. So the first thing I'm going to do is make an output. And then I'm going to put all of my animation comps in here. And these are like rigging comps. And then I'll just make an extra one for footage. I don't know if I'm actually going to need it, but I'm going to put it here anyway. I just kind of like to have it. <laughs> it's, it's a nice dumping ground of, in case I import anything. Um, so we are going to put all of these into our animation folder right here. And we're going to have sort of a pass through composition before our main rigging and our main animation composition. So our main scene, which I'm going to put here. So this will be, uh, again, we'll do this 1920, 1080, 24 frames a second. And we will call this animation comp. So we will pull our eye rigging composition. So this one right here into a new composition. And I'm going to call this uh, mapping comp. Oops, okay, I accidentally hit it twice there. So I'm going to pull that. Oh, did I? Oh, okay, that's what happened. I don't know how I did that, but I'm going to delete that. Open up the mapping comp and bring the I rig in here. Here we go. All right. Crisis averted. So the first thing we're going to do here is change the size of the composition. Uh, we're going to just do sort of arbitrarily at first because that's exactly what it is. I don't know. Let's do 3000 by 1500. And this is why. So if I go in my animation comp and I pull that mapping comp inside here, we are going to add CC sphere to it. Why are we adding CC Sphere? So CC Sphere is a pseudo effect in After Effects. It's one that I really find a lot of use in, and it allows us to create a sort of rotation effect with any, any layer. And so in this case, we will be getting a rotation effect with the eyes. So this is really helpful if you want to have your character turn left or right and, and find it really difficult to get results that are a little bit more realistic. This is a pretty cool technique to do that. And so we are going to rig our eyes into this. So right now it looks a little funny, like we have shading on one side that just sort of defaults to that. So we are going to change a couple of parameters here. Ambient change it from 10 to 100, and then diffuse to zero. And that should make it pretty flat. We are also going to change this render option here from full to outside. So we're only getting the front side. So when it turns, we don't get, we don't see the inside of that. And we are going to hook this up to a uh, joystick in here or we might actually, so I, lo I love joysticks and sliders. I find it really useful. I also really like do a 
Basil. It's just kind of a I I I've loved it for years and not just for rigging, but also just typical workflow things. So we are going to use the controller rig here. So if I select, let's see, let's grab these keyframes here. I'm going to just select all these so that I can pull them down. And we're going to make some extremes. So for, we're going to go to minute out or second out, sorry. And we are going to change the Y on the Y axis. We will do negative 90. Let's do 90, 90, and negative 90. And on the x axis, we will change it from negative 90 to 90. So that's pretty awkward, right? We're going to fix that. Don't worry. So we're going to make sure that we are in the rigging tab at the top here and that we are going to go to links and constraints. And here we have connector as an option and you're going to hit this little advanced connector function. And there we are going to build a 2D slider. So we are going to adjust a couple of parameters here as well. Let's change this to 400. And I'm going to change the color. So let's change the middle controller to purple. And yeah, do the same with the handle. There we go. This looks really similar to joysticks and sliders. There are differences, mainly that uh, it's the way that the expression tweens between things. This, as you can see, we set a start and an end keyframe. I should set them at the same point. While joysticks and sliders finds the tweens between five points or four points, because the origin doesn't count, uh, this will move between only two points, and that doesn't make sense just yet, but hopefully we'll hear in a moment. So with our Y axis, that was the left to right, we will grab the controller, we will select it here, um, or select the position down here. Let's figure out a number first. So if I move this over here, it looks like our extreme is negative 200 to 200. So with our position selected, we will select the property. And now it's saying that we will use the position data from this controller to derive through these keyframes. So again, on the X axis, we will change this to negative 200, maximum 200. And then we select the Y down here to connect to properties. It's going to make a little little well, symbol here, we can just turn that off, lock it. We don't need that. And so now when I go left to right, ooh, we get left and right. Now that might have been confusing because this is moving on its x-axis, but it's technically rotating around, the eyes are rotating around the y, so it's a little, the, the nomenclature could use some improvement there, but that at least gets us what we want. And so then we're going to do the same thing, but in the other axis. So all we need to do is change this from X to Y, grab the ones that we did not hook up before, and then connect to properties. So now when we grab that controller, it is the opposite of what we want. So we don't have to unselect it. We just have to move these keyframes around, which is one of the upsides of Duik, is that you can update it as you go. So now if we were to grab that controller again, go up, Look at that, looking great. Yeah. So when you kind of get in the angles here, you see how we 
we can't fully go like up and then over it it always goes at an angle that's just something that we accept with this method um also the eyes look a little close right like this this circle which represents the head for whatever creature we're rigging right now uh it might be a little thin right now you might say hey th those eyes are really wide on on this design and that's that's totally fair so what you can just do is go inside your mapping composition and almost treat this like a uv map if you're familiar with 3d or um it, it just just a, a place that you can edit pretty freely without messing up any of the expressions so now if we were to go back in here it's smaller and looks a lot better or maybe a little bit closer to what you want and that's just kind of a little freedom that we gave ourselves. And because we built this so big, we can even, you know, we can scale it all the way up to 100. And then here, if we wanted the radius bigger, we don't lose any resolution. It starts to get a little fuzzy, but it's really not that bad. Um, let's do this to 200 again. And I kind of like this when it was down to 70. So let's do that. There we go. We have our eyes looking around, but we don't have our controls in here and we don't have our pupils yet. So let's do the pupils next. We will go to our rigging composition where we have our controls at. And I'm going to move back over to Illustrator and pull my art in. So right now I built this so that when I pull these in, they'll go directly where they need to go. You might need to finagle that a little bit, but uh, these are pretty much in place. Yeah, these aren't even, but that's fine. We're gonna move them later anyway. So the pupils that we pulled in, oh, let me, right now they're both on the same layer. Let me try that again. Overlord has this little button that will separate multiple layers if you have them selected. So let's try that. We will rename our artwork. So this is now the right pupil. And this is the left pupil. Based on the way our character is looking at us, we will Select both of these, shift control C to pre-compose them, and we will just call these the pupils. And we'll move those above the eyes, and then if you hit this little button right here, it will map them against the eyes. If you don't have that button here, you can right click on this kind of bar here, go to columns and then make sure that you have, I think it's modes. Yeah, modes selected. Brings it back and there it is selected. So now when we go back to our, this is our mapping composition, go back out to our animation one, we get this kind of soulless bug-eyed <laughs> uh, atrocity. Okay, so now we're gonna rig up the pupil controller. And this is just for where the eyeballs are looking independently from where the head is turned. So select your pupil layer and then go ahead and hit A and then shift P to get both your anchor point and position transform options. And we will select here at 12 frames in or if whatever is the middle of your seconds if you're working at 30 frames a second, 15, 15 frames in. And we're just gonna set some keyframes just default keyframes. And then we are going to set our extremes. So for position, let's make this our left to right. So we will select that 960 and we will subtract 200. And then we'll come one second out and then we will add plus 200. Now we can delete that center keyframe. And we're gonna do the same thing with the anchor point and this will be the up down so let's do 540 minus 150 for all, all the way down and then for all the way up let's do plus 150. now these are numbers that i've dialed in you yours might be 
um, more than that or less than that, um, that's really totally okay. Those numbers don't matter. All that matters is that it looks right for your character. So we will delete the center point. And now this looks really awkward, just like the head turn did, but we are just about to hook this thing up. So over here in the Duic Basil, of course, make sure that you're in the rigging tab and then select the links and constraints and we will hit the advanced connector again and we will select the 2D slider controller. And you can position this right in the center, that's fine. And let's rename this. Um, actually, it's it's got a great name, pupils. I must have had it selected. That's fine. Um, Let's change the size of the slider. I think we did 400% before, so let's do that again. And so when I move this over to the side, we're around negative 200. It, again, you're, you set these parameters. So right now I'm just kind of looking to see what it looks like here, and then we can adjust based on that. So right now, when I go all the way to the side, it's around negative 200. Looks a little bit more than that, that's fine. So grab that position and hit property to select that property. And then let's set this to negative 200 and then positive 200. And we have the X, so let's grab the position, select these keyframes, and then connect to property. So this will connect it to the position of our controller. All right, and then let's change this from X to Y. Grab the anchor point, connect to properties. And now it's zeroed out right in the center. We have our little connector thing in the way. Let's get rid of that. And now when we grab this controller, it is the opposite of what we want for the up down again. I made that mistake, but that's okay because we could just switch these around. It's one of those things that sometimes you learn stuff and then sometimes you don't, but if it's not too much of a problem, then just forget about it. But anyway, this works and that's what's important. So now we can set the um, preserve transparency, lock that layer, and we have some nice eye movement. Okay, so the last thing we are going to cover is getting these controls out of our rigging composition and into our main animation composition. And this is where you could either hand off the project to have someone else animate it, or you could animate it yourself and just have everything in a nice clean place. So the first thing we'll do is the uh, pupils that we just rigged up. So I will grab both the controller and the the kind of bounding box that comes with it. Copy those, go to our animation composition and paste those in. Let's zero it out right to the center. So 960 by 40 is the center of our comp. And then I'm actually going to just get rid of that one bounding box. It's more for a visual reference, but our all we need is this control right here, which right now isn't connected to anything. And I'm going to drag the, the timeline down. So now we have duplicated it. And I'm going to select our rigging composition. And pretty simply, just holding down Alt over the stopwatch and grab this pick whip right here and connect it to the position of our new controller that we just made in our animation comp. So now, bring this animation comp back up here. If I grab that controller, it is moving the eyes in our pre-comp, independent of this controller. And that is really cool. So let me... Change the color of that. I just like, I think orange and purple are kind of nice for center points on a rig. Um, actually, maybe I'll do green. Some Ava unit one action in here. 
Here, it's looking nice. And then I'll save that. And let's do, let's get these, uh, these controls in that composition as well. So I'm going to go back over to joysticks and sliders, and this has a really neat feature where it can actually send controllers to its parent composition. We've already done it once, uh, and we're just going to keep doing that. So it is a little heavy because that means that the, it's tying expressions through all the compositions. I think you can do stuff with essential graphics or master properties and After Effects to uh, alleviate some of those issues. It's not that bad, so I tend to just kind of do it this way. I think it's clean. It's all inside. Um, it's all inside joysticks and sliders. So we'll do that here for this tutorial. And we have to do this with every single one. So I can select the joystick itself, make sure it's sending it to the parent comp, and then hit to parent. And then I'm going to do this on all of these, all the way up the chain to the animation comp. All right, so now we have them in here. This is where you might want to change the colors of some of these. So we have one color for the left side, another color for the right side. Of course, you would want to keep this consistent. Um, throughout your entire rig. So the left side will always be one color and then the right side will always be the other. And then sometimes it's nice to have one or two colors for center controls. But now you see we have full control over every aspect of these eyes. And we can get a wide range of emotions, as well as some rotational effects, all from one composition. And that concludes the majority of this tutorial. That's everything that I really wanted to cover. Um, obviously, in my illustration, I had some more art direction in here. And you would go through the same process with the eyelids that you did for the eye fill and just kind of layer them inside your rigging composition. The eyebrows could be done in there as well. They could also have their own composition. Uh, but you would bring them in here, place them on a sphere all the same. Another control that you might want to give is inside the eye itself. When these are the eye fills. Inside the pupils, so if I go inside the pupils, you might want to add an additional transform to each of these. So here in the effects panel, we have a transform effect, which you can place on there. And then it gives you additional position information that you can hook up to a uh, Duic controller, and then in your animation composition, you can have that in here. So you could get some, like if you wanted to have your character go cross-eyed or maybe from a certain angle, they don't look quite right. And you'd want to have uh, a little bit more control over individual eyes. That's something that you can do. Um, you can also do some play with scale so you can have your pupils scale in and out, which can create kind of a neat effect. You can get a little more of a cartoony look that way um, or a dilated look. But those, we're, we're starting to get to the point on the rig where the sky is the limit, your own, your own uh, creativity is the limit, and also the character itself. So if you had any sort of designs for your character sheet, now is where you would reference that and really start to dial in some of the aspects of the rig to make your character come to life. So thank you for watching my tutorial. Uh, please follow me on Instagram at speedlag. Like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
As you know, that really helps me out. Hit the bell for notifications to make sure that you are there when my next tutorial goes live. I don't do my tutorials as often as some others might, but I try and cover a lot when I do. So hope you get, learned something really great from today's tutorial and I'll catch you next time.